stress. Stress is needed in order for us to achieve the things that we're tasked with daily. You wouldn't go to work, you wouldn't take care of your kids, you wouldn't get up and take a shower and take care of the house if you didn't have stress. You need to have stress in your life. However, too much stress can start to cause problems. How I like to think about it is a dimmer light switch in your house where zero is the light switch off and 10 is on. With your stress, you wanna have it between approximately a four and a six. Anything below a four, and you're not taking care of your life. You're not doing the things that you're doing, you need to do. And anything above a six, it just becomes unmanageable. When people come to treatment, they're above a six in their stress level. And it's moved beyond that beneficial quality that keeps us motivated and determined to get tasks done. Another word for stress is anxiety. Oftentimes when people come in to their appointment, they list all of these symptoms that they're experiencing and I ask them, are you anxious? And they say, no, I'm not anxious, but they are. They just refer to it as stress. So let's talk a little bit about anxiety and what anxiety is. You've probably heard of the fight or flight model. What this model is, is it's a system in humans that gets us prepared for an actual danger. So for example, if you're walking down the street and a large dog is running at you and about to bite you, your body gets prepared. Your muscles get tense, your breathing gets faster and shallower, your heart rate increases, your adrenaline is released, and you get tunnel vision. Tunnel vision is where you're focused only on that dog and there may be another dog coming behind you, but you don't see it and so you have limited view at that moment. That's the fear response. Fear is in response to an actual danger. What anxiety is, is that same system being turned on in response to a perceived danger. Perceived simply means it's not staring you in the face at that moment. So some examples might be, will I be fired from this job? Will I be able to pay my bills this month? Will my child get to school safely? Those are all perceived dangers because they're in the future and they may or may not happen or they may or may not even be problems that are something for you to focus on. With anxiety, you have the worry thoughts which then lead to the anxiety. Fear though is a system that should be turned on rarely. When you have the anxiety, you turn that system on 24 seven and you start to notice some of the symptoms that usually bring people into treatment which is difficulty concentrating, low frustration tolerance, poor sleep, not doing things that they used to enjoy. Those are all symptoms of anxiety and having the system turned on constantly. Some other symptoms might be muscle fatigue, general fatigue in your everyday activities, and just not having the energy and motivation that you had previously before your stress levels started to increase. So when you have that system turned on all the time, you're working at maximum level. And so little things start to become big things. Somebody might bump you with their cart at the grocery store, or your spouse might ask you to take out the garbage, and you become upset, and you snap at them, or you withdraw, whatever your way of handling those situations are. That's normal considering you have no more resources left. However, it's going to impact your ability to function in your everyday environment. And so recognizing those symptoms and recognizing that they are a component of the anxiety is absolutely necessary for you to make some changes. So again, you have that stress level, you wanna keep it between a four and a six, but you're finding that it's consistently at the max level. When you go to treatment, there's lots of different treatment options available to you to help you better manage the anxiety that you're experiencing. As I mentioned, stress happens every day. But what you'll notice is your stress slowly creeps up on you and you may not recognize initially that you have more stress or there's more stressors in your life. But we talked about what some of those symptoms are that indicate that your stress is getting to a level that should be looked at and addressed. And again, that's having poor concentration, poor sleep, 
changes in eating habits, or becoming more irritable and frustrated. When you start to notice those symptoms, there's some things that you can do to help lower your stress and anxiety level. One of the most common techniques used is relaxation. Relaxation is reversing the anxiety response. If you remember, we talked about anxiety when you're anxious, your heart rate increases, your breathing gets faster and shallower, your muscles get tense. When you're relaxed, your breathing gets slower and deeper, your heart rate decreases, and your muscles are relaxed. What you notice is you cannot be anxious and relaxed at the same time. It's not possible. So when you can implement the relaxation response, by default, you're reversing the anxiety response. There's lots of different relaxation techniques that people can use. Some of them are quick, and some of them are a bit more time intensive, but finding what fits best in your schedule is going to help you. One of them is deep breathing. This is, allows you the opportunity to sit down, take deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth, breathing from your diaphragm to fully implement that relaxation response. Another form of relaxation is called progressive muscle relaxation or PMR. As we become more stressed, as we become more anxious, we tense our muscles and we don't notice. Even me, I don't think about where I carry my tension until I have these conversations with patients and then I recognize that I carry my tension in my shoulders. And I want you to look at your body and see where are you tense right now. And that tension is a sign of stress and anxiety. With progressive muscle relaxation, you do this process where you tense and relax the various muscle groups. It's a process that you use, but it helps you understand this is what my muscle feels like when it's tense. This is what it feels like when I'm relaxed. So you become more aware of your body and how the stress is affecting your body. Once you meet with your therapist, you can learn specific techniques to walk you through that process, but I want you to know that there are options out there to help reverse that anxiety response. So we've talked a little bit about mindfulness, but I wanna give you a little bit more information on what mindfulness is. When we worry, again, it's about those perceived dangers, those things that could, have ha could happen in the future, but also things that have happened in the past that we can't change or have no control over. When we start to worry, we start to increase our anxiety. What we wanna do is to stop that process from happening, to decrease the anxiety that we're experiencing, and one technique to do that is with mindfulness. Mindfulness brings you to the here and now and keeps you focused on what's happening now and not on other things that could happen in the future. When you start to feel an increase in anxiety, so the muscle tension, noticing poor concentration, that you're more irritable, low frustration, you want to put yourself in that moment right now. And the best way to do that is to focus on what's going on. So your five senses can bring you into the moment. What am I seeing? What am I hearing? What can I touch? What can I smell? What can I taste? When you're focused on that, your senses are happening at this moment and it brings you back to now and helps decrease your anxiety. So mindfulness is a very powerful tool to stop that downward spiral of worry that can lead to a worsening of symptoms. So now I want you to stop what you're doing. Put down anything you're working on, put your phone away to the side, and just focus on your senses. So let's start with what you're seeing. Look around the room. What do you see? Is it brightly colored? Is it dimly lit? Pay attention to what your eyes can see in that moment. Now focus on the smells. What does the room smell like? You've probably never thought of that before, but I want you to think about what smells are in that room. Are they pleasant? Unpleasant? Is there a candle burning? Again, focus on what smells you're experiencing. Now focus on taste. I want you to close your eyes, really think about the taste in your mouth. Again, is it pleasant? Unpleasant? Can you remember what you had for breakfast or lunch this morning because of the taste in your mouth? 
What about the sounds around you? Can you hear any noises outside of the room? Is your room itself noisy? Again, focus on what you're hearing. And now I want you to take your hands and feel around on what's in that room. Is there a desk, a chair? Is it soft, hard, hot, cold? Really feel each of the items in the room. Now combine all of that together and really focus on the five senses of what you're experiencing at this moment. Don't think of anything else, just what is happening right now. What you just did is mindfulness. What mindfulness is, is it takes you out of your thoughts and worry about the future or the past and what you could have done differently and put you in the here and now. When you're in the here and now, you can decrease your anxiety because you're removing the thoughts that lead to the anxiety. So when you start to experience the symptoms of anxiety that we've talked about previously, such as poor concentration, low patience, irritability, fatigue, that's a cue for you to say, I need to stop, I need to slow down and just be in the moment. When you're in the moment, you are practicing mindfulness. So as I mentioned, we need stress, but also stress can start to creep up on you slowly and start to cause problems in your life. Just know that it's normal and there's lots of effective ways to manage the stress when it starts to become problematic. We reviewed a few of those, deep breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, and mindfulness. And these are all things that you can try at home on your own to see some lowering of your stress. However, you can also speak with your therapist about options available to you beyond those, or if you need a little bit more assistance in implementing those into your life. What I want you to take away from this is that you can learn to manage your stress and it's not something that's going to continue to impact your life as it has been and start to cause problems for the long run. So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and comment down below and I'd be happy to get back with you and answer some of your questions. Again, I'm invested in your change and giving you tools that you can use to become a better you. You can also subscribe to this channel and you'll get regular updates on other tips and techniques that you can use to manage your symptoms or behaviors that start to become problematic for you. You can also log on to MindsetTherapyOnline.com where I have a blog and discuss some of the common symptoms and topics that I've gone over today as well. I'm Emily with Mindset Therapy. Thank you for tuning in and I look forward to giving you more information in the next video.